Well, thank you, LA. Um, good evening to everybody. It's so wonderful to see so many people in, in this uh, program uh, tonight. Um, my name is Carlos Borrata, and I am the current chair of the Dance Palace Art Committee. The Art Committee uh, provides opportunities for local artists that live or work in West Marin and encourages new artists to exhibit their work in our lobby gallery on a monthly basis. But due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the Dance Palace has been closed for over a year, and we still don't know how long this will go on. As we're unable to meet in person, the Dance Palace has been moving classes and events online. This uh, decline in income has moved us to rely on donations and has invited us to find other ways for the artists to exhibit their work and have our artist receptions. The Art Committee answered the challenge by going virtual. The artist receptions from the last 10 months have all been recorded and are available to all of you at the Dance Palace website. So now what I'd like to do is tell you about the artist of the month. Inspired by the mercurial weather of West Marin, Nancy's art is indicative of the wild nature of the sea and land with the ever changing, always inspiring interplay of light and fog and the unpredictable winds and weather. Capturing the movement and the transparency of the Point Reyes Ocean has been a fascination for her. Appreciating all aspects of West Marin life, including the animals and landscapes of the ranches, as well as the wild lands and the national seashore have been important subjects. All of it is part of the fabric of life in the community. Nancy's art career began with a master's degree in printmaking at San Francisco State University. She worked in etching, aqua tint, and mezzotint for many years before beginning to work in large format pastel paintings in 2001. She moved to West Marin in 1975, where she built her own house and raised her daughter, Anna. In 1996, she built a small rental cabin built from a Douglas fir tree that broke in half in a storm. Nancy has also worked for many years as a landscape designer, contractor, Nancy's series of wave pastels is now on wave number 83. And she has recently branched out into working in oil paint. Her work also includes some work in ceramics. So please join me in welcoming my friend, Nancy Stein. Thank you so much, Carlos. Uh, Carlos has been a very good friend of mine for many, many years. Our children grew up together. Um, so I began my art career, as he said, uh, with printmaking. Um, and I'm going to show you and explain a little bit about that before I move into the pastels. So the first slide is one of on the left side, you can see the copper plate. So in etching, what you print from is there are little, you have to make a little groove in the shiny copper plate that will hold the ink. So on the left side is the plate itself. You can see they're very beautiful. They have that shiny quality. It's very precious to work on them. And this is a picture of a very small bird that lives here. It's the winter wren. And I wanted to put it on a teacup to give a sense of actually how small the bird is. So this happens to be, there are many ways of getting that groove into the plate. Um, this is an ancient technique. I mean, it goes back 300, 400 years to Rembrandt and Durer and all kinds of people who who work Goya and a lot of Japanese printmaking printmakers also. Um, so this is a mezzotint and you can see if you look at the plate, you can see how there are lines in it and those lines came from a rocker. And I had the clear, shiny copper plate and I went across the plate in every direction many, 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 many times. And then what I had 
was a black rectangle with no image on it. If I had printed it at that point, it would have just been a black rectangle. So to get the image, you go back in with a scraper or burnisher and you draw the image by scraping out the lines you have made with that rocker. So, and it has this quality of, um, it, it gives you that very dark, velvety, rich quality. And I just kind of fell in love with it. So next is, um, this is one of my earliest etchings. The, the last one was about 2010, I'd say. This one is Country Mile, it's called, and it's an aqua tint, and it's from 1975. It has watercolor in it. And it came from a trip to uh, Orcas Island um, in 1975. And the next one is called Bucket of Clams. And that one came right from um, the Botel. <laughs> there was a bucket of clams sitting there that I thought was just quite a beautiful image for an etching. And this was the time probably in about also around 2016, I'd say when I was working in Rick Little's studio, I do have a small press. Um, I did etching for 30 years. So, um, and I have a small press, but it was a pleasure and a, an honor to work in uh, Rick's studio. And the next slide, the next picture is my daughter, Anna, in a very pensive mood in about 1995. That is um, a soft ground etching drawn into the plate. So that is it on the etchings. When I became, when I got to this point with it after 30 years where I was really tired of working very small and doing these very tiny, you know, very precise drawings and I wanted to work large. So I got a hollow core door and I put it on the wall um, as a easel. So it was six, six feet long. So then I could get a six foot piece of paper and work very spontaneously, very fast. And that image, that long narrow image just begged me to work with ocean waves. So that's where I began the ocean waves. And this is, I don't have a lot of the really early ones. The early ones, I just, I have slides, but I don't have, uh, I don't have digital images. So this is one of my favorites, it's wave 14. And uh, you'll see as we go through these, I got very fascinated with working very close up and very far away, getting really close to the image, really far from the image. Um, and next slide. This is wave 15 and it was um, just a very beautiful day on the beach where the light was behind the wave and the form of the wave was, you know, just the way it unrolls in that really beautiful way. This is wave 42. We're moving up in time here again, getting very close and um, also being fascinated with the, the front, you know, the way that land, the, the way the surf is in front of the wave. Um, And this is wave 43. Oh my goodness, this is so beautiful. Um, Nancy, do you mind if I jump in here? Um, I spent time with Nancy twice um, when we were preparing for this. And one of those uh, occasions, she actually shared a poem with me and uh, it just really knocked me uh, off my seat. 
Um, and I, I really need to share this. If you can put up with me for all of you, put up with me for a bit here, but uh, it's so powerful and it distills the essence of, of Nancy's art when it comes to all these waves. Um, and it goes like this. Each wave is an individual living out a brief life in a spectacular movement, a moment in a vast ocean of other beings. We have sea water in our veins. We are drawn to the ocean, healed by its sound, touched by the mystery. We are kin to the mammals that nurse their young as we do. We are descendants of the plants once crawled out of the depth of that salt water. What we don't know but sense speaks to us on a level that has made us human and connected, capable of love. Thank you, Carlos. I wrote that a, a cup about two years ago. Well, thank you, Nancy, for writing it. What a beautiful poem. Thank you. Um, you know, I, I wanted to ask you one thing, Nancy, that I uh, that really kind of like, I, I don't know much about painting. So for me, it's kind of like, like a mystery. And I, I've been wondering, like, what is the process with all these waves? I mean, because it's really a, mo a moment in time when a wave is coming through. How do you do it? What, what's the process? So um, that's a really good question. I, I, you know, I live, I've lived here in West Marin for 44 years, and I'm busy with amazing other stuff. You know, I have another business. I have a, I had a house to build, a child to raise, grandkids. So I'm a busy person and I'm always driving around and I am literally just assaulted by the beauty here. It's, it's around every corner. It changes every day. It's, it's um, affected by the fog and the light and you can't, you don't, it's so unpredictable. And so, and I'm always on my way somewhere. So I don't have time. I've never had time to stop and draw something, which I would love to do. Um, but I have a camera, I have an iPhone. And so I take a picture and then I go on with my business. But the picture is my, it's like my catalog or my, my memory of that moment. And it isn't so much that I'm, that I take that picture home and then I copy it. It's that I take that picture home and I remind myself of that inspiration that I got at that moment. That's what I'm after. That's what I wanna put on the page is that, because it's kind of, um, those moments are, they're amazing. They're the most, they're the happiest I ever am. I mean, they're, they're total gifts. And so all of the work that comes out of that is homage to those moments. Wow. Wow. <laughs> and that goes, you know, as we go on here, that goes for the images. We're going to move from the waves now to other images. And that goes for these two. In fact, this one is called Little Tree. And I'm going to let you in on a secret. It's um, in this picture, it's in a forest, but you can, you could have found this little tree in 2010 in Point Reyes between the vet's office and the wood shop in front of the McPhail's tank. The, um, the yes, yes. <laughs> yes, tank. And <laughs> someone planted that there. And it was just one day I was going by and the way the light hit that little tree, it was just so proud of itself it was just you know and now it's probably as you dr drive by there soon you know those of you who live in point Reyes, and you'll see it's about 30 feet 40 feet high um so it just really spoke to me this is going up the mountain and um every year 
Karen and David, who are in the audience tonight, uh, we go on a wildflower walk in the spring. And we went, this particular year, we went on the Matt Davis Trail and it was raining. And it was really hard to see anything. There were some wildflowers, but um, it was actually a wonderful, wonderful hike. We had a great time. But the next week I went back and I was again, just blown away by the, the mountain that I couldn't even see when we went on the hike. The mountain just went up from the path. So there were, I don't have any, I never had a picture of this. This was just came straight out of that memory of um, being just so excited to see the mountain show itself in the fog. Wow. And then in, uh, I think it was starting in about 2005, I was invited to be part of the malt show, which um, I've always loved malt and what it did for our community, which is um, it just revolutionized people's lives in many ways. And this is uh, a barn. It was a new malt, malt um, purchase. And it had, it was, I think, their first purchase of land. And it was like a, it was an old barn, but the entire back was missing. So it was like a theater set, kind of. And I just loved that image. And then this one is basically on that same property. It was a little cottage that someone was living in. And I loved the reflection of the hills, but also how I could see the, the curtain, the lace curtain in the window. And this is Preston Point, and it's uh, north of Marshall. Before you get to Tamales, it's actually a peninsula of land that goes out, and that is the beginnings of Walker Creek and Tamales Bay behind it. And uh, it was a winter evening at, at sunset, one of those moments that just was the, the beauty was just very, very wonderful to see. Um, uh, this is actually the wetlands area, Point Reyes, kind of, um, I guess that's Martinelli. And it was just, a, a again, a a day, a very late in the day time, kind of like it is now where you get a sort of sunset, a point raised sunset where it's kind of muted and our colors are so muted and the, the, but the sky is really reflected in the water. Um, and uh, the, those forms of, I mean, we all see this so often um, these forms that the water takes and uh, are, are the importance of wetlands um, to our lives is, is enormous. This is another malt image that came from um, a ranch that's in Tamales. Um, and I just love the way the barns, you know, somebody, some rancher had a real eye for those buildings and how they all slip in there together, the way the windows are. Um, it actually really looks like that. It's, it's really how it looks. And the color was, you know, there's a giant hill behind the the ranch is sort of tucked into a valley in, uh, in Tamales. And this is Lehman Tour Marsh. 
Um, <laughs> one thing I loved about this, this was kind of right after the fire in 95 and the trees were, um, the big trees had burned down. And so there's just that little hint of the smaller trees in the front. But we often get our best sunsets in November. This one is called November Night, um, where we get really vibrant um, sunsets like, like they do in where my sister Mary lives in New Mexico. Um, and uh, so that's why I named it November Night. And uh, Lehman Tour is the beach that is closest to me. So it's the one I see the most, but all of the beaches out here have, uh, you know, every time I go, it's different. It never, it's never, it never is what I expect it's going to be. And it's never the same. It's always, it's always, there's always something out there that is a surprise, even if it's um, birds or sometimes even people. Last year, there was a, an airplane <laughs> that landed on Lehman Tour. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty shocking. And this is the road leading to my home. It's called Towards Home. And it was one morning I had gone down the hill for something. And on the way back up, the fog was breaking and the light was coming under the trees, the beautiful oak trees. And uh, it just really spoke to me. Of, um, and also how it, the whole day was sort of leading into that mist, going somewhere that you kind of can't quite see. Just going into your life, you know, going on with it without really knowing exactly where it's leading you. So one thing that happened to me in the last, um, three or four years is that they stopped making my pastel paper. The paper I used was uh, very rough. It was basically sandpaper and I would buy it in a huge roll. And <clears throat> when I couldn't get it anymore, I have a little bit left, I could do a few more, but when they stopped making it and I tried to use the substitute, it just was like so frustrating because it wouldn't do what I wanted. And it felt like I was being interrupted all the time to have to adjust to it. So I decided to oil paint. So as you can see from starting out with the etchings, mostly I draw and pastels being chalk, you know, sticks of chalk, that also was really drawing. So this is a new thing for me. I, I never took painting, although I have a master's in art, I never took painting and I'm enjoying it very much. However, it's really challenging because there's a lot to painting. It's, you know, I have so many brushes to choose from and I don't, and there's mediums and mixing color. And so I'm a beginner with this and I'm, this is one of my first ones It's called Field and it's about 10 inches square. It's very small, most of my, pastels were really, really large. <clears throat> Some of them are, most of them were six feet long. This one is 10 inches. <clears throat> and it is, um, I think Claire is here. I hope Claire and I went up to um, the Jensen Conservative um, up in, uh, above Jenner, <clears throat> excuse me. And this is that field and the, the, fir trees coming up uh, behind it, coming back, marching down into the grasslands. It's actually a prairie grassland conservatory. So this is an oil painting. It's actually a little bit bluer than this, but this is my photo with the iPhone. <laughs> and uh, it's about, Oh, 16 inches, 12 by 16, I would say. And for me, this is uh, one of the times when 
our ocean is very quiet. Um, we do get these times, even with, you know, this ocean has quite a range of voice. It is sometimes incredibly fierce and incredibly um, wild. And, uh, and then other times it's really soft. This is probably Lehman Tour. I mean, it isn't, didn't come from a photo. It just came from my head, but this also is an oil painting. So, and I, I wanted to say this thing that to me, what's been really great for me is that I'm so comfortable having done 80 some waves with that form that that's really helping me with oil painting because then I can focus on all the other aspects that are, that I'm trying to learn um, as I'm oil painting. Mm. Yeah, wow. This is also a oil painting. So we're in oil paintings now. We're not gonna go back to any pastels. These are all, this is the new, this is the new era. This one is 16 inches square. Um, square is just a lovely format, I think. And uh, it's really great to work with the skies and oil paint and just kind of push that paint around. I've been really looking at uh, Russell Chatham's work and some other oil painters that I admire and just, you know, trying to sleuth out how they get those the qualities I would like to have. This is an oil painting from standing up on the bluff in Bolinas and looking down at the sea. And I was standing there and I, I thought, oh, I'm definitely gonna do a painting of this. This is very beautiful because the ocean in Bolinas is really different than the ocean in Point Reyes. It's very flat and the waves go way out. It's really where people surf. And along came this surfer and stood there and looked at the ocean. And I thought, oh, this is perfect because without that surfer, you don't have a sense of scale. The surfer is what makes you realize how vast and large that ocean is. Yeah, yeah. This is wave 79. Um, and this is one of my, I was three paintings I've done so far that are really large. This one is 45 inches and uh, just trying to capture that whole form. Again, this does not, did not come from a photo. This just came from working with what I now take to be the ocean um, and how it is a memory in my cells. <laughs> and uh, trying to get that, that and that sky to um, show itself in oil. Wow. And this last one, I think this is the last, no, there's a couple more. This is uh, wave number 80. And it is again, just out of my head, but I'm, I love this, you know, trying to capture this, the wildness here, that sense of movement and just the craziness of the ocean that it's so, um, that's so appealing to me, you know, to be that close. I'll never, ever be a surfer, <laughs> but this is sort of virtual surfing for me. And this is my very last painting. Um, this is wave 81 and uh, it's about 10 inches square. And just that wild ocean and the sky, you know, the way we get these rain skies, these fog skies and the movement of the sea.
And this is the end of the presentation. And this is called What Remains. And I live amongst very beautiful, very large, um, amazing fir trees. And they are, I think the reason I titled it this is that they, they are such beings of peace. You know, they, they just absorb what's around them in the most quiet um, and profound way. In this particular one, there's a rare sunset and it's shining, it's orange on the trees, but very often and often, and I have some other paintings of trees too, and I, I intend to do more. Very often these same trees are just, they're all gray. It's all shades of gray. So that's right outside my window. It's something I see every day. And so for me, it's what remains. <laughs> So uh, I am, that's it, My um, the pictures. Well. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> oh, I see some faces I, I recognize there. Oh, that's great. Um, Nancy, uh, we should probably have a conversation about some of the things. I mean, I, there's a couple of those waves, uh, like when you go two waves back, there is one there that has this beautiful tones of in the sand, the gold, and then it gets darker to a little brown, and then it gets, and you can you actually capture perfectly, my opinion, the, the there's some places in the ocean, and if you go to any of our beaches where the 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 sand has made some kind of a uh, a, a promontory where the waves are coming from two sides and they join together as, as in the in the sand, and that it's what it reminds me of. It's like too too far too too ways back. But anyway, it's um, it's back really fascinating. Let's go back. Yeah, let's go back to just it's like um, two ways back. Second. I'll get I'll get there. <laughs> Let me find it. <laughs> All right, there we go. I think it's wave 80. I think Let me know if this is the one that you are talking about. Yes, yes. Um, you know, you can see that there is a, there is a, like a connection between one side and the other and and the, the sand really goes all the way in quite a bit. So these waves are coming from the both sides uh, to join each other. And yes. it's delightful. I mean, and then that sky up there, it's, it's just tremendous. Thank you. Tremendous. Thank you. Um, yeah, well, it I, is a crash. It's often yeah, it's a crash. I'm blown away, Nancy. I tell you, um, <laughs> you know, there's waves and then there's waves, and uh, you got some waves. Well, you know, these are not Hawaii waves. No, these not at all. Not at all. Not Hawaii. The Pacific. Yeah, we don't have yeah. that color. We have a really different color. We uh, we have. We have a very, it has a very different voice here, yeah. waves here. And out here, uh, when you think of it, if you go to, to Drake's Beach, you're going to get a, a certain waves. And you go to the North Beach or South Beach, and then all of a sudden it's like, it's just huge. It's, the, the magnitude is so different. It's just so amazing. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, people that wants to join in, uh, please do. Um, I don't want this to be a conversation between Nancy and I only. So well, if there's anything that... a conversation between the two of you. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> if anyone wants to ask any questions, we're now kind of moving into the question and answer session. So the chat is open. Um, I've got my on the chat. We have in the meantime, lots of beautiful people saying beautiful things, Nancy, about your work. Um, I am going to be sharing all of those nice words with Nancy afterwards. Um, there's so many comments that I want to make space for the questions, um, but I want to say thank you for everyone uh, sharing your beautiful words and for your presence. Any questions? I, I have a question. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, Nance. I just want to say, first of all, um, that was just a wonderful presentation. It's so lovely to just see all of your incredible work. And I'm just so grateful that we get to have some Nancy Stein originals at our house too, that I get to see every day. So 
Thank you for that and congratulations for that. Um, and when you, I was just kind of reflecting on your, when you said about um, how, when you take the picture or whatever, you're, it comes from a happy place with um, the wave. But when I seen a lot of your waves sort of over time, some of them are very dark and stormy. And I wonder if that also brings up melancholy, you know, when you were doing your pastels or whether you're coming from a happy place just because you're able to take the time to create this wave. Thank you, that's a great question. I actually really only work when I'm happy and I, I can't do art when I'm unhappy. In fact, I didn't really do anything during the pandemic. I was just too anxious. And so I, wow. I, I did a lot of walking. I just did a tremendous amount of walking and that really cooled my brain out and settled me down. But even the ones that are dark, I love the dark. I love the end of the day, that really spooky time of day when, you know, things are, um, you should be at home and you're freezing and you're hungry and you're still out there, you know, and it's kind of, it's a little spooky. And, uh, and often, I mean, the ocean here is, it's scary at times. I mean, it's, um, and, you know, I'm, I, I have a wild, I have a wildness too, that I have, I mean, they're just places I've been, especially when I was younger, <laughs> where I shouldn't have been, you know, <laughs> where I was hiking too late or too dark or, you know, the tide was coming in or whatever. And uh, that's really precious to me. And it's a great way to be wild, you know, in nature rather than all the other crazy ways we humans have of being wild. So I'm grateful for that. It was a great question. Thank you. I just want to say um, that I have seen Nancy's art for years. I'm her sister. And that was made me cry. It's like being at the ocean watching those waves. Like it was like one after another, the ocean was moving. It was beautiful, Nancy. I love you. Hi, Burke and Anna. And hi, Jennifer. <laughs> That's my sister, Mary, who is in New Mexico. <laughs> that was so beautiful. Oh, thank you so much. Oh. She's in New Mexico where it's another kind of beauty. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Thank you. And Hi, I Alice. <laughs> and Burke. <laughs> and I see Marcy and Peter there. Hi, Marcy and Peter. Yeah. They're in Minnesota. Wow. wow, wow, that's great. We have a crowd from all over the place. That's awesome. Well, thank you, Mary, for your <coughs> comment and question. Um, I wanted to chime in and let you know there's some questions in the chat. There's a question from David saying, Nancy, I'm interested in your process of creating a painting. Do you have a full idea in mind at the outset or do you start with one idea and expand and how does the painting process itself develop? Oh, thank you, David. Um, hmm. Well, sometimes I I'm almost always have something I want to do, and I often get very derailed. Um, it just I think that's just part of the creative process, and to be open to that feels like sort of half of the fun of it, you know, because I'll say, okay, I'm gonna, this is gonna be a gray sky. This is happening right now a lot with oil painting where I'll say, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna really work on gray. And then I start working on gray and I just, I can't do it. I just, it isn't what doesn't wanna do what I wanna do. So it just doesn't turn out gray. It turns out, you know, kind of, Viridian goes in there, I don't know. And there's a way that um, following that, again, it's like, it's a kind of freedom, a kind of wildness that is maybe part of why I chose to work with the sea so much because it really suits my, um, my nature, my way. It's my way of being a wild thing, you know? 
So, so yeah, that's, and, and then also sometimes one painting leads to another. Um, I'll often work on something that's really close up or I'm getting the beach in and I'm getting the clouds in and I've done the whole ocean and I'm, and then there's one little piece in there that's kind of interesting to me. And then I want to get really a whole lot closer um, to it. So sometimes a painting will lead to the other. The other thing I want to say in case there's anybody here who does want to do, um, who does, who's working as an artist is I think it's really scary. I think staring at a piece of white paper is, you know, so, so one can be very discouraged by that. Everything that happens that we feel about ourselves comes up when we look at that, that white piece of paper. And really early on in my, I think I was in my 20s when I had a Buddhist teacher who said, there are five thieves of attention. And they are, I don't know if I can remember all of them, but self-doubt, um, self-aggrandizement, like I'm the best artist that ever lived and this is amazing. Um, planning, I know exactly how I'm going to frame this. Um, uh, I better call my sister, you know. There, so there are these attention, there are these moments when even if you're thinking about the painting, but you're not in the painting, you're in how you're going to frame it, or you're in your own self-doubt about, I really, I used to be able to do this, but I can't do this anymore, you know. Those are moments to just stop, to just really stop and wait until you can get back into this, this state where you're really at one with whatever it is you're playing around with, because the play is fantastic. Hmm. So, but Nancy, how long normally does it take for you to go through the whole process and, and be able to say, okay, this is finished. This is what I wanted and this is the image. Yeah, that's a, that's a tough question because sometimes I never pay attention to that. I ah. just can't. And nothing, the prices are never based on that because, you know, one painting leads to another. I mean, there's some paintings that took me months to do where I just, maybe it even sat on my board for months and I didn't do, I didn't know what to do to it. I couldn't see it. And then others come really fast, you know, that might do it yeah. in a day um, or might do most of it in a day. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, Nancy. Hey, Nancy. It's Mark. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hi. How you Mark. Doing? Hey, long time no see. Yeah. Um, about painting. The only time I ever painted was when I was when I lived in Marin. For about, you know, ten years I was painting. I just picked up the uh, a brush and. A, a canvas and I just dove in and um, I wasn't school taught. I learned everything by myself, which is how I do everything. Yes. And I always, you know, ach achieve my goals, let's say. But since I've moved back to the East Coast, I, I kind of stopped. I sold all my, my paint brushes and stuff when I left Marin. Mm -hmm. I have been for the last 20 years building exhibitions in a major museum in New York City. So I've been surrounded by mm. the most amazing art. Mm. Um, one of the most magical parts of my job is opening up a crate and there's a $18 million Modigliani staring you in the face. Uh, <laughs> it's just amazing. And it was like that for 20 years. That's um, <laughs> it was awesome. Right. So now I'm retired and um, I have some artist friends and they even gave me, you know, new brushes and paints, but I am, what's the word, petrified of starting. And I don't know, I, well, I know exactly why it is because 
I kind of, uh, I mean, the magical times in Marin were just that magical. Mm -hmm. um, here it's a little more reality. And especially with what's going on now, it's just, it seems like the magic was just kind of faded. Um, uh, I don't know, I don't wanna get everybody depressed or anything, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm not, so, I don't have the energy here to, to pick up, you know, uh, yeah. paints and uh, brushes and all of that. So, you know, I, I'm, I see my son doing it again. I don't know if you've seen his, I was going to say, I did see his work. It was very, very nice at the Dance Palace with Carol. Oh, he's amazing. He's amazing. Yeah, with Carol's uh, work. Also yeah. wonderful work. He's, I mean, so, he's so and, uh, everything he does. Yeah, yeah. You know, the major thing is to just do it. Just put the paint on the page. I know, that's what everybody tells what happens, <laughs> you know? Just to do it. Okay. Um, yeah, but some, you know, you some people. Later. <laughs> yeah. I think the word I was looking for was paralyzed. Yeah. You know, I've been it's, there. It's I've, in I've my head. There. Right now, it's in my head. It's like, no, I can't do this. No, I, I mean, I get there still. Yeah. I, and I, you know, there's a thousand things to do in my, I mean, sometimes I'd rather vacuum than paint. Mm -hmm. It's pretty sad, but it's true. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm avoiding just, you know, getting myself into the studio and doing it. And uh, once, once I do it, it usually takes me somewhere. Good. Interesting. Yeah. Nancy, this is Karen. Hi, Karen. Hi. Um, I think it just seems incredibly brave of you to have done the kinds of changes that you did from little still to wild huge and then back to small. If you want to talk about that a little, I'd be very interested. But I also have a question about your family. The three sisters I know live in New Mexico, Inverness and Cabo Pulmo or lived, I'm not sure where they are now, but they're some of the most amazing places in the world as far as I'm concerned. And I'm curious about whether there was something in your family that whether you influenced each other or whether there was something in your family that made you pay attention to that sense of place? That's a really interesting question. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we all, I was born in Oregon, but we all really grew up in Maryland and no one stayed there. Um, everyone came back to Oregon and then kind of went off from there. And Sometimes I think about that. Everyone has lived in a beautiful place in Minnesota, near the, in Northern Minnesota, near the lakes, um, in Baja and New Mexico and in Oregon also. Um, so we just, I don't know, we just are lucky. We're lucky, I guess. And uh, I think we're all kind of sporty and interested in nature and um, and we all, everyone in my family, my mother was very encouraging about making things. Um, she, she, that was one of her ways of handling having seven children um, was having lots of art materials around, you know, to keep us out of her hair. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, and uh, there was some, there was another part to your question. I can't remember that in the beginning, um, sorry. Okay. Unmuted now. Um, just want, want to know more about those transitions from oh, the transitions. Yeah. Well, you know, in some ways they're exciting because, um, <laughs> there's sort of beginner's mind. It's kind of, you know, you think you can't do it. So it's kind of a nice surprise when you can, you know, and there's discovery in it. Um, that part of oil painting is really fun for me. It's not going to do what pastels did. It's, it's going to be different. And, uh, and it, it, I can't, 
I, I am sort of a servant to it rather than the, the person who gets to decide what it's going to do. Um, but that's true. And I think in all art forms, maybe in life, but it, certainly in art forms, um, uh, you can't fight it. You can't get the paper. So you can't work so hard on the piece of paper that you get tears in it, but we all kind of get there occasionally. We all kind of push it to that level. Mm. So, you know, yeah, it's, you. it's got a lot in it. It's got a lot of, a lot of um, personal growth in artwork, a lot of facing oneself that I think is really juicy and good. And um, I, I have to say, I mean, I think we're getting pretty close to the end here. I just want to say, this was doing this little reception with Laurel Ann, who is amazing and digitally has helped me so much with this. And Carlos, who um, is an amazing photographer whose artwork, whose own artwork is totally astonishing. He's the only reason I'm on Facebook. Carlos Parada, you can see his photos of um, animals and birds uh, every day. They are amazing. And, um, and also just the dance palace. And I miss it so much because that was our, um, that is our link to each other. It's our community. And so much has gone on there in the last, is it 50 years? Are we coming up on? Is yes, we're coming up to 50 years. It's 50 years. So music, dance, poetry, parties, you know, um, plays, incredible plays, incredible events have gone on there and we can't do it right now. So if anyone, oh, and really important, I want to say this before I go, my studio is open um, with a mask and the windows open. You're welcome to come and see my work. There's no obligation, um, but if you do come and you buy something, I will give 30% of the sales to the Dance Palace. So, because I really want this to uh, continue. And um, I just wanna say thank you to Carlos and to all of you. For... I don't know how to say oh, thank Anne, you. Anne, who also is an artist in, um, Uruguay, and who's you can see her artwork on the uh, archives. I wanted to actually add, um, Nancy, that um, this uh, this programs that we have actually been doing in terms of uh, going virtual uh, have come to a point where even after we open the dance palace again, we are thinking of actually continuing some of these. Uh, simply because when you go to the gallery at the Dance Palace and there is supposed to be an artist reception, basically everybody is just walking around looking at all the actual photos. And a lot of times you don't get the chance to actually get to meet the artist and really actually get more of a conversation out of it and understand some of the, the processes that they, they use to actually do their, their work. So we have decided we're going to actually uh, keep doing some of the uh, the Zoom uh, even after we can open up. Uh, although right now, who knows what's going on with the situation of this Delta variants. And uh, so we don't know where we're going to end up. But um, I just want to thank Nancy because actually um, it, it's, uh, it was such a pleasure to spend a couple of days up there chatting with her and getting to see all this work. I had not really seen a lot of these things and the process of it, um, it it's just delightful. Um, and so um, I just wanna say thank you, Nancy. Thank this, you. Is, um, this is great. This is wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Laurel Ann too in there somewhere. <laughs> Floating around in the, in the floating heads. Yes, thank you both. I, I also wanted to acknowledge for the audience, I, there are a lot of people that had questions in the chat that we didn't get around to tonight. Um, and I'm sorry. 
and um, I will be sending them all to Nancy. She will be send seeing these questions and I have shared um, Nancy's email in the chat in case you have a burning question that you'd like to ask. Um, all of this information also will be sent out in an email to everyone who's registered um, starting tomorrow. And so yeah, get in contact with Nancy, go see her amazing studio if you're far away, um, we have a beautiful virtual exhibit online that I shared a link for too. So it's the virtual equivalent of walking through her gallery, kind of like we did tonight. So um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that we didn't. Well, cover. I, I just have to uh, put the word out that actually next month, the artist will be Bruce Mitchell. I don't really know yet exactly what date it's going to be. But join us again for a, a nice chat with Bruce Mitchell and some of his wonderful woodwork that the things that he does are amazing. Uh, anyway, uh, thank you so much for all of you to actually join us and, and be with us. Thank you, everyone. And yeah. thanks, Laura, again, again for thank facilitating you. all of this. <laughs> thank you, Nancy. It's really been such a treat to listen to you. I, I see lots of claps here and and um, thank you all for being here. Thank you, Nancy, for just sharing your art with us and all of your your poetry and your wisdom and your your life story. So um, people are asking if this can be recorded. It will be recorded. It will be up on our YouTube channel starting tomorrow. So if you loved it so much that you want to watch it again, that's an option or you can share with friends. <laughs> um, and yeah, I, I hope you all have a great night. Um, I've also sent, I've put a link in the chat to donate to the Dance Palace, um, and I think that's it. So thank you all, take care, and see you next month for Bruce Mitchell's show. Bye. Thanks for attending. Bye. Bye. Thank you.